Hi, I'm Maddie Zedner, and today I'll be presenting my reverse engineering project. The first thing we did is go over our potential customers and their needs. We came up with several potential customers, which could then be sorted into a couple of main groups. There were kids, who would mainly be given the product by a parent or teacher. There were people who would use the product in an emergency situation, such as disaster preppers, emergency workers, and hikers or backpackers. There were those who would want it for the crank such as people who fidget and physical therapists, and people who would buy it to resell. There are people who would buy the product just for the novelty. And finally, engineering teachers teaching this course. Each member of my team interviewed a couple of people on their opinions on the product. We were given a couple of questions to ask and also created a few of our own. We first asked about the potential uses that our interviewees thought the product could have. All of my interviewees took the easy way out and said that it could be used as a flashlight. The one continued to say that it could be used in emergency situations. Two of the interviewees liked the aesthetics of the product, but one thought that it should be simpler. They liked the dependability of the product. One interviewee thought that the product wasn't intuitive enough, and the other disliked that it seemed very cheap and breakable. They suggested that the product be sturdier, quieter, and have options for aesthetics. One suggested a magnet so that the product could be attached to a fridge for easier access. Two liked the cute aesthetics of the product, but one preferred that it be less cutesy. Generally, they thought that the product was comfortable. The one brought up the issue that it was a bit harder to use with their left hand, and another had an issue with a mostly unusable lanyard. Funnily enough, the youngest interviewee, age 11, had the easiest time operating the product. They said that the light bulbs indicated its purpose pretty clearly. The others were confused over the different switches. From these interviews, we could extrapolate several needs for our redesigned product. Some of these were more important than others. We ranked the needs by frequency and importance, including data from all of my teammates' interviews as well. From this, we could see that the most important needs were cute, intuitive, and comfortable. After collecting our needs, we converted them to metrics and decided how we could measure them. We decided on several metrics that we thought were most important to measure. These were geometry, force, light output, sound, and comfort. We measured the geometry of the product first and drew a scale model of it with measurements. This encompassed the length, width, and height of the product, as well as things like the size of the crank and the circumference. We decided that the product was a bit small, though well-built for a child's hand to hold. We thought that the ears of the pig were annoying as they protruded and poked the user's hand if it was too big to fit below them. We found that the switch to open and close the crank was hard to reach, and that the loop of fabric at the end of the product was too small for use as anything other than a keychain. After testing the amount of force needed to crank the pig, we decided that it was a reasonable amount. We also determined that the sound output of the product would not hurt the user's ears, but our test was fairly unreliable, and other teams got different results. The light output of the product was consistent, and our test was reliable. For the comfort test, we recorded the time it would, we, would, we could crank the product until our hands felt uncomfortable for the first time, and then until we couldn't crank any longer. We determined that the time that the user could comfortably crank the product was not long enough to be usable and the dim light that was produced would not illuminate very much at all. This made us consider not having a crank at all in our redesign. Before disassembling the product, I assumed that the crank of the flashlight would push, push against a gear to spin it, which would then turn a generator that generated electricity. I thought that electricity would then be directed to the LEDs, causing them to light up when the crank was pushed fast enough. I also assumed that the switch closer to the pig's head would separately turn on and off a battery that could be used to turn on the flashlight without the crank. I assumed that the switch that was further from the pig's head was used to hold the crank in place. I laid all of this out in sketch form, so the quality of the image was not very good. After making our predictive sketches, my team and I disassembled the product. We found that my prediction was mostly correct, though oversimplified. In the actual product, the crank was connected to a curved rack and pinion that pushed a gear, which pushed another gear that was connected to a magnet that was connected to a dynamo. The dynamo sent electricity to the LEDs in the eyes. The switch that was closer to the head of the pig connected to the set of batteries that could turn on the flashlight whether the crank was moving or not. 
The switch that was further from the head of the pig could clamp down on the rack and hold the crane closed. One of the major things that we discovered after dissembling the product was that the crank did not charge the batteries of the pig. Generally, other than its novelty, the crank seems rather useless. It didn't charge the battery, didn't light up very much when used on its own, was tiring to use, and when held wrong could pinch the user's fingers. This led us to consider not having a crank in our redesign. Once we had reassembled the product, we had pretty much gained everything we could out of analyzing the hand crank pig. It was time to start our redesign. The customer group that we had decided to prioritize was children. Though the flashlight had the potential to be useful in an emergency situation, the amount of light actually produced, as well as the aesthetics, made it clear that it was more of a toy than a tool. We decided, in order to compete with the product better, to work along the same line. We came up with several ideas and worked through their pros and cons and we had to decide between two. The first was a toy, shaped like a castle or a rocket ship. They could open up and let out a flashlight, shaped like a knight or an astronaut. The structure would act as a charger. This idea would probably be the most expensive out of our ideas to manufacture, but the novelty and quality would most likely outweigh that. The second was a Furby that we would modify to have glowing eyes. This would require a partnership between our comp company and the Furby company, as well as be expensive to manufacture. Since Furbies are already a popular toy though, it would probably easily defeat our opponent's product in terms of sales. My team decided on the first idea, as it felt a bit cheaty to simply modify an existing product that we hadn't put a lot of effort into analyzing. We also thought that a Furby with glowing eyes would scare children, and that a new toy that would be more appealing for parents to buy than a brand new toy that has become less popular in recent years. After deciding on an idea, we revised it heavily. Our final product was a rocket that could sit in a holder shaped like scaffolding to charge. The tip of the rocket was the flashlight and was covered in a semi-opaque material similar to a plastic ceiling light cover that would mute the light slightly so that it was safer for children to look at. Connected to the base was a crank labeled rocket fuel that could charge the batteries, as well as a plug that could connect to a wall socket. Compared to the original design, ours was sturdier, as it was made out of higher quality material and worked better, as it wasn't totally dependent on a small crank. It was also, in our opinion, more fun, because children wouldn't get tired when using its main function. It doesn't create a grating sound when used, and the light is kept from hurting user eyes with a semi-opaque cover. Users can enjoy its appearance by setting it up on a shelf in their room as a model rocket, or disconnect it from its stand and use it as a toy. Of course, it is also useful and effective as a flashlight. Mm, that's it. Thank you for watching and learning about my reverse engineering process and results. Bye!